I just love God. I'm, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm crazy. And I'm going to tell you all something. I'm going to tell you something. As long as you're in this body, you're going to go through something. But what you do, you learn not to magnify what you go through. Sometimes even in your testimony, it's good not to even talk about it. Talk about it after you get the victory. You're not going to always feel the best. But when people ask me, say, how you doing? I say, I'm better than blessed. That's the bottom line. Let the weak say what I am strong. Let the sick say I'm healed. That means that you may not be here, but say it. You're speaking it out of the mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you learn to profess a good profession. Because what do you expect? Shall, what shall a man receive good at the hand of God? Shall he not also receive evil? Just because you save, your grass going to need watering too. I guarantee you, I don't care how safe you are, you can't go out there and holler glory in your grass. All of a sudden, it just fall out cut. No. And every time you have a problem, it ain't the devil. Sometimes stuff is just life. Man, I had a flat. You picked up a nail. That wasn't the devil. That, that's just life. I got up this morning. I was yesterday morning. I, I happened to look down the way my truck was parked and the tire was turned out. And I looked and right in the inside was a, was a screw. I said, I don't know how deep it went. I said, I'll find out in the morning. I get it fixed. I didn't get it fixed today. It's still up. I said, I'll get it fixed. But I know it's in there. But you know what the Lord did? He let me see it. Amen. Now I know it's there. So I don't have to worry about going down the road. And I said, well, you know, I got a low tire. I'm going to get that fixed. But that's just life. When you, you know what? Every loaf of bread you got, when you buy it, you know, it's got a butt in in the front and one on the back. Sooner or later, you keep eating on it, you're going to get to that last one. That ain't the devil. That's just life. That's just, that's just the way it is. You got a, a jar of jelly. Uh, 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 I mean, I like Folgers coffee. I, if I keep dipping in there and making coffee, sooner or later, I got to get another container. That ain't the devil. That's just life. And sometimes we get to hollering and saying this and that and other, but some of the things we just got to live up, you know what? Look in the mirror. I found the letter. I was in there in the office doing some stuff, moving some stuff around. You don't know it. I found the letter you wrote in 2004. One day I'm old, I, I showed it to Sister Roger. She never saw it. And it was your thoughts of this church and how when you came from Atlanta and all of this and how you loved this church in uh, 2004. This church here was only, we had been here two years because we started this church in 2002. Beautiful letter, two pages, all that pretty writing. And I said, man, and I, I, I'm going to keep this one. Sometimes God doesn't know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. But what I want us to understand is many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered out of them all. And some things, I'm going to tell you all, saints of God, everything ain't the devil. Some stuff come with, with age. I'm not talking about being 65 and 80. When you bust 20, stuff start changing up. Well, amen. And when you hit 40, that was a good old day, boy. I mean, when you, when you bust 40, uh-huh. I tell them all the time, sometimes I sit on the side of the bed and I tell all the troops we're going to come up at the same time. Some of them don't get up. Some of them, some of them when I come up, some of them still laying on the bed. Sometimes I get up and I, I feel a twinge in there. I say, what is this? Sometimes you move a certain way and you get a little, curt, little catch back. I say, what is this? I went to Atlanta and I, I brought my, some of my stuff back. I brought my Bowplex back in my treadmill. I got my, my exercise room set up. Yeah. I got my 15-pound weight. Been to get it. Time to get it. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. time to get it. You know what? You can't talk to them weights and they do something. You got to do it. Y'all know y'all don't want to. See, you don't have to do a whole lot of talking to that fork. It come up automatically almost. But when you got to get in there and get on them dumbbells and all that stuff and, and you're doing all that, whoo, 
Ooh, you're on that treadmill and, 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 and don't cheat. Because if, if you don't hit that button, it's going to keep running. That means you know what you got to do. You got to keep either get off of it. Or it's going <laughs> to. Do you not know? Once, one of the hardest things to do is get in shape. Once you get to that point and it becomes a part of your routine, it's automatic. It's just you. It's part of you. Because it's, you know what? It's in your psyche. You like what you see. And you know what you have to do to keep what you like, what you see. Because if you don't do what you need to do to like what you see, then after a while you're not going to like what you see. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff leaves you when you control yourself. Hey Amen. I ain't getting no help right now. Sister Roger, she loved carrots. And I was looking up last night all the, the nutrition that's in carrots. Raw carrots are better for you. And man, she can, and baby carrots, she, she just eats them like popcorn. But that's all right. That's a good thing. But see, once you do what you need to do, it's, I, don't worry, y'all want to, well, Pastor, where you going with it? It's the same thing spiritual. If you want your spiritual man strong, you can't talk scripture. Well, I'm going, I'm going to. I'm, no, you got to get in. You have to study to show yourself approved. A workman unto God need it not be ashamed rightly because you can wrongly divide the word of truth. Amen. I don't fight churches, but I tell people like this. Holiness is right. Is that all right? Not UHDT, but holiness is right. And UHDT is part of that that is holiness. Amen, Lys. Well, I see I'm going to have a quiet house tonight. I'm going to tread the wine press alone. God is still a good God. And tonight I want to work on us. Did I write? I want to work on us. I want to help us out. I want to help us. Listen, people, sometimes you have to look for what's causing stuff. And once you find what's causing stuff, then you fix it. Because once you fix the cause, then that that was happening, now it stops. Once you fix what the cause was, it stops. It stops. You can't talk it. You got to fix it. If you got a roof, you got water dripping through the ceiling, there's a hole somewhere in the roof. I mean, you what I'm saying? And we need to put the bucket out there. Putting the bucket out there only catches the water. That doesn't fix the roof. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Once you fix and put the bucket up and use the bucket for mopping the floor or something else. But until you fix the roof, you're going to have to keep that bucket out there or water's going to run all over the place. Now the carpet is wet. Folks, somebody's going to slip and hurt themselves or whatever. Then it's going to start mildewing and this and that and other. One thing leads to another. But all you have to do is fix the roof. So I said, well, I don't know how. That's why you help people to fix it for you. <laughs> See, some stuff you don't know how to fix it. That's why you got to pass. And my job is to help you fix it. And everything I'm not going to fix, some stuff I'm going to show you how to fix it. And then I'm going to show you if it come back, you'll know, you know what? I remember the last time. Uh-huh. Now you can fix it again. Don't go get that bucket. See, that bucket is a shortcut. The bucket is a temporary relief. In the insurance business, anytime you have a, uh, a damage or a claim, your deal is to do everything you can in your power to fix it until the insurance company have a chance to fix it or come out and do an adjustment on it. Well, amen. amen. If, if, the, if the come a hailstorm and you got a skylight, you don't just leave the skylight up there and water coming in the house. Your job is to put a tarp or something over it and tell the insurance company to prohibit from more having more damage. That's it. That's it. Hello? When you, get, when you get a hole in your skylight spiritually, come on, come on. I'm going to help you put a, a tarp or something over it so you don't damage nothing else. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you all a little secret. You see, you got to be real careful because sometimes 
you can get damaged by somebody else. Sometimes you just running too close. And stuff can rub off on you. The night the Lord gave me a good message. And I'm still coming out of that Atlanta mode. Is that all right? I'm still coming out of that Atlanta mode. But I'm, gonna, I'm doing the best I can. I got Dallas and Atlanta since I've been traveling back and forth. I got them tied together. How many brought your Bibles? You know I'm going to ask. Hold them up. Let me see them. Brooklyn, where your Bible? This is the second time I said that to you. You better get one. There's too many red backs around here. All right, take them down. Getting ready to get into the Word. Got your little pretty glasses on. I know you got to have something to read. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, I don't want to see you out there with your glasses on. Think I'm looking at you. You better be reading. <laughs> God help me. God. What my, my subject is this evening? My subject is staying positive. Staying positive. Uh huh. I'm not talking about being positive. See, you can be positive but not stay positive. Staying, 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 staying positive. Meaning what? You're not going to be negative. Do you know how your car? Your car's batteries stay positive. You got something under the hood called an alternator. And that alternator, you use your, you use your battery to, to start your car. So I'm gonna, well, I'm going to give Sister Sherelle a little lesson. She learned something this week. See, the horn can blow, the lights can come on, the radio can come on and all that, but you don't have enough cranking amps to start the car. All that stuff worked. Horn blow. Ain't nothing wrong with my battery. It takes more power to turn that engine over than to do to blow the horn. Or the, or the, the dark light to come on in the inside. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. What are you saying, pal? It's, it takes more power for certain trials than to do other trials. Because, see, your car has what is called an internal combustion engine. And it works it works in a synchronized manner. It has pistons. It has spark plugs. It has a carburetor, a fuel injection system. And what it does, it creates a vapor from the gasoline and it sprays it to the cylinder. And then you have a power stroke. And when that, when that, when you hit that ignition, that starter turns over, spin that flywheel, it makes those pistons move, and they get the fire. Then the engine starts up. And when it starts up, it's comfortable that it's going so fast. That's what man. And then when it's purring right, you don't even you can put a quarter on it, it won't even move. But when it's missing, heck <laughs> uh, it's ugly. But it takes a lot of torque. Once it gets started, it's fine. But getting it started, you not know you can take a locomotive, a train that's sitting still and go out and rock right on top of the on top of the track. Under the wheel, and that whole train can't move. Because a train don't have rubber tires. It's steel on steel. And that rock will not allow it to move. That's simple. I'm going to talk about this tonight. Staying positive. Staying positive. Watch this. Staying positive. Staying positive. Stay, staying full of sheer. Staying confident, staying strong, unwavering, undefeated, rising above, not rattle, staying positive, knowing what to do at the right time, staying positive, you stay, you're staying positive. I know, you, I know you got a Bible. You look pretty in your little jacket, but I know you got a Bible. I, I didn't see it. That's how I didn't see it. I'm looking. I'm looking. Oh my. I'm looking. Stay. You're going to stay positive. You're going to stay engaged. You're going to stay aware of what's around you. 
You're going to stay in the position that whatever happens, you have the wherewithal to handle it in the right way. You're going to stay in the mindset, I got this. You're going to stay in the mindset, I'm better than this. You're going to stay in the mindset, I can defeat this. You can stay, you'll stay in the mindset at all times. Whatever rise up against me, I got it. No weapons formed against me. What did Paul say? No weapons formed against me shall prosper. You have you have to believe that no weapons formed against me will prosper. Meaning what? It won't work. They're going to form the weapon, but it ain't going to work. How many hear what I'm saying? So you're going to have stuff that's going to come up against you, but when you're, when you're positive, have y'all seen anybody positive? When you're positive, you look at the glass as being half full instead of half empty. When you look at, when you look at your car, you don't say, well, I'm half empty. No, I'm half full. Positive, positive, everything. Okay, my shoestring break. Well, if I got enough, I'm going to pull some more up. If I have to skip down a couple of hours, I'm not staying home from church because of a, a broke shoestring. Right, right. I ain't getting no help. I'm going to get a half amen somewhere amen. through here. Amen. I'm not staying home from church because I got a half of my shoestring broke. So I'm going to skip down a two hours, and that'll give me a little bit more. Then I'm going to still tie it up, and I'm going to go to church and ooh, still shout. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yeah, saying positive. I told y'all, I, see, I can go way back. Saying positive. See, Sister Roger, when they, when they, they buy those, those pantyhose, she buy all, most of the time, she buy the same color. One leg get a run in it. You know what she going to do? Take some scissors, cut one leg out, then get another and cut the leg out of that. Now she got a right and a left, and you put them on. But I'm not staying, I'm not staying home from church. Well, I don't have any. Staying positive. Ain't getting no help right now. I don't know why y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Well, somebody, but Pastor ain't never done that. Now you know, now you know you can do it. Staying positive. You know what staying positive? You know, staying positive that means when the when the toe, when the toe wear out of your sock. You know what you do, bro? You pull it down just a little bit and then tuck it. And then slide your foot in there first and then get it in there. Sometime over in the service, it might get to working around after a while, and you feel that big toe touching that leather in the bottom. That's all right. I'm in church now. Okay. Woo. Staying positive. Oh, God. Oh, my way. Got some on my shirt. The devil said, you can't go to church now. No. Go in there and get you a little cornmeal, some white cornmeal, and rub it with a cloth. And it'll take most time to get the stain off of it. And then come on to church. If you ain't got no corn there, just get you a little, uh, do, do it easy. Put a little salt on there and just rub it real light and that little stain will come right. Then, don't wet it. Then blow it off. Then. Come on, chair. Well, I'm about to stay home. I'm not sure. Though. You stand positive. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? You may happen. Brother, sometimes you say, well, I, 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 oh, God, I, I ran out of ultra I don't have anything to put on my hair. You got some Vaseline, don't you? You got some Vaseline? Go ahead and get you some Vaseline and rub it on there and make them curl. Make them curl lay down. They ain't natural, but let them stay there for a while. Then come on to church. I ain't get no help right now. Oh, my shoe looks so dusty, and I don't have any kiwi. I don't, you got some Vaseline, don't you? Take that Vaseline, hit the toe of them, and rub them with a rag, clean them up, get the excess off. Boy, they shining like new money. <laughs> That's why you stay positive. You tell yourself, I'm better than this. Tonight, I want to call your attention to the book of 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. Ah, since I'm in this teaching mode tonight, y'all gonna y'all gonna work with me? Yeah. I'm gonna drive this scripture home. I might quote a few, but this is my main meat right here. First Samuel thirty and one. I'm gonna give this for a little background. Saying it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag 
on the third day. Have y'all ever noticed how I keep telling y'all that God is a numbers God? It was three Hebrew boys, right? Right? Jesus was in the grave three days and three nights. Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Three days. So they came after the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, and they invaded Ziglag, okay, and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away. And went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. And behold it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept. Until they had no power to weep. And David's two wives taken captive. Ahilahim and the Jezreelite. And Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the souls of all of the people was grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Woo. See, you have to understand something. When you are driving your car, all the accessories that you have on is trying to take from your battery. Your alternator is putting the current back, keeping the battery charged. When you're going through your trial, the trial that you go through, what they're trying to do is take away from your spiritual faith battery. And he wants you to feel discouraged and feel like you're not coming out of this and this and that and the other. And if you don't come to church, that's when the Bible says, so then faith come at what? By hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? That's why it's important for you to know who you are listening to. Because if you're not listening to a sent preacher, you're getting fed angel food. I said, what, what they call that angel food cake. You're getting a low-cal diet. It's got stuff in it, but there's a lot of stuff missing from it. That's why when you hear, when, when, when the word comes from a sent preacher, then that a word is anointed by God because God is giving the sent preacher a sent word. And when you get a sent word, it's going to energize you. And then what you're going through. Let me tell y'all something. This is something I want y'all to remember. The Lord was dealing with me this evening. Do you not know? And then Sister Sadia was testifying a little while ago. Do you not know when you're dealing with something and you have to go to rehab? An athlete, an ACL, a sprained knee or whatever. And then he has to go through rehab. Do you not know in his rehab, he's got to stay positive? Listen to what I'm saying. Even though they've done the surgery and fixed whatever happened, the rehab, they got a little commercial come on TV about this little girl uh, playing soccer. And whatever she did, she tore something playing soccer. Then they showed her at the, uh, at the uh, rehab. And when she was in the water and all this, and they had her going through all that stuff and all that training. You know, when they'd be laying flat on their back and they pushing with their legs and exercising and doing all this on the treadmill. But see, the thing about it is, when you're in rehab, all the rehab doesn't just happen the first day. If you got to do rehab for six months, you know what you got to be? You got to stay positive. That's why some people say, you know, one guy, and I, I, don't, I don't, you know, gloat over people, but... One guy that always stood out to me were two. One was Gail Sayers when he messed his knee up. And the other one was Benjamin, basketball player. He messed his leg up. And I guess the third one was Kobe Bryant. Because you got to have a determined. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? See, rehab, when they do the surgery, that's the quick part. 
But now, do you want to play again? Are you just satisfied? They got me stitched up. I'm fixed up. I'm going to get my money for the rest of my life. I got enough money saved up. They're going to pay me because I got some guarantee. But do you, do you want that mobility? And the thing you got to remember, sometime when you go to rehab, you don't get it all back. I, can't rem- I hope I'm saying, Gail Sarah used to say he needed, what, six inches of daylight. That's all he needs. In other words, he could, he could do the rest of it. They called him the boy. He, he could come through them. You're talking about woo, 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 woo. Folk looking for him. Never seen them run like that. But what I'm saying, when he hurt himself, he had to go to the rehab. Saints of God, listen to what I'm saying. When the devil hits you with a blow and the whole surgery on you, now you got to go to the rehab. You got to show up every day. You can't be that rat. You got to do whatever you got to do. Sometimes it's the loss of a loved one. Different things come into our lives. And it attacks us. Sometimes it's a sickness. Sometimes it's a, it's a spiritual thing. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Sometimes as you start getting older. You don't remember like you used to remember. Well, that's all right. I am, I'm, I'm going to talk to myself. Sometimes I got to go back in the room and think about it. Well, what did I go over there for then? Oh, yeah. Now I go get it. I ain't having none of y'all here. No, yeah. Keep living. Keep living. Keep living. What was I supposed to do? These young folk doing that. I went in the room to get the broom. Forgot it. Oh, what did I come to get? Ah, ah. Go back in there. The trash pile in the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you get laid off your job. Now you got to go to rehab. What's wrong with her, brother? Ma'am? What's the problem? Patting on your back too long. <laughs> Just say you and sister, none of y'all should have been up. Mm-hmm. No, I was trying to pat on your back. Oh, yeah, I have major indigestion. That's all right. Say too much. Kind of see, like see what it is. You know what? The enemy don't want you to enjoy oh, what I'm yeah. saying. Now, in the paper towel. Now, see that? See when you when you take care of the problem, the symptoms leave. That's it. Devil didn't want her to hear what, what, what I was saying. You don't come in on my turf? Oh no. Uh uh-uh. uh. So. When you're dealing with something, you have to deal with it. But let me get, let me get to something bigger. There's a thing called mental rehab. Mental rehab. That's when you're damaged mentally. That's 
There's no surgery for mental rehab. See, they can do brain surgery, but the brain does not, the brain controls your motor, your actions. It does not control you, that other you. That's why Sigmund Freud got in trouble, trying to deal with the mind. The Bible said, let this brain be, he said, let this mind. That mind deals with the inner man. It deals with the very personality. That's that other you. The one that lives in this house. And see, you can hurt. He can get hurt. And once he get hurt, the hurt that's in him can affect this here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the enemy can just wear on you. Yo, let me let me let me keep it real today. Sometimes he can wear on you. Sister Rogers made a statement, and it sort of got me. She said, "Now all my life I've worked. Sometimes, I mean, I, when I work, I'm self-employed. I work. I've known times I came home and got out of my truck, opened the door, and put one foot on the ground on the on the concrete and went to sleep." In the back, in the backyard, in the alley, in front of my garage, went to sleep with one foot in the truck and one foot on the ground. I was that tired. I'll tell you something, when you've been pouring concrete, when you've been putting shingles on, you've been framing and all that hanging sheetrock. You did it off from early that morning, late that evening. Then you got to drive almost an hour home. And all that traffic, all them crazy folk. I got in front of the garage and just went to sleep. Right there. You know what? I'm coming to church, though. I'm coming to church. I don't care. I'm coming to church. And I'm coming to church. And I'm not coming to church sleeping. I'm coming to church. And I'm going to get a blessing. I'm going to fight the devil. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah, because I know what? That spiritual man needs something. If you ain't careful, you know what the devil tried to change? You know you need to rest. Really? When you get damaged mentally, now you got to go to spiritual rehab. And spiritual rehab, you don't get your deliverance the first time all the time. There's a process. Yes, yes. And you got to keep coming to church and coming to church and dragging it, putting it in, taking it for yourself, applying it. That your spiritual man can heal because you never get anywhere with a dead spirit. That's why you got to stay positive. That's why it's very careful. People say, well, you know, there, there are people known, they call them specialists. This doctor got a reputation for being there. Let me tell y'all something. Preachers got reputations. <laughs> got bad ones, and they're like some doctors. Got, Man, there used to be a doctor over in Oak Cliff, a dentist. I, I promised myself, when I got out, I said, you'll never get in my mouth again. He got ready to pull a jaw tooth, and I told him, he said, no, I said, no, doc, no, doc. He said, I'm going to wait a few more minutes. He came back in there, and he said, God, oh, Jesus. He said, no, I said, no, doc. And he came in there, put his hand around, caught me on my chin, stuck him, boom, boom. I thought, oh, God. He said, you can spit in that pan right there. I said, God, if I ever get out of here, if I ever get out of here. If I ever get out of here, I don't believe he's pulling teeth. I hope he isn't. But he's over in Oak Cliff for a long time. Right there on Illinois. Oh, God. I can even see the office. I said, John. I said, if I ever get out of here, I'll never come. But then you know what I'm saying? There are certain doctors, they have a reputation, and some call them quacks. But then there are doctors that people refer to, man. That's the best one in town. That's the best one. That's the best one. Oh, he's the best. Somebody talk, call his name. Oh, he's one of the best. She's one of the best. She's one of the best. Call somebody. Oh, God, no, no, you don't. Don't go to him. Don't go to him. <laughs> Folk leaving, leaving scaffolds in people's bodies and all kind of galls and this and that and the other. And they stitch them up. 
they're, they're talking about when they're going to play off and who won the Super Bowl. And they're just they're talking and they just show you up and leave paralysis in the inside of you. But what I'm saying, there are people that have gotten wounded. They've gotten hurt mentally. And don't misunderstand what I'm saying. A mental hurt does not necessarily have to be something that somebody did to you. I was getting ready to go. Sister Rogers made a statement the other morning. She said she was cooking something. She made the statement. She said, well, oh, yeah, y'all know I'm, I'm 65. She's retired. She said, well, I'm, I'm trying to save money. And that's the first time. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, you gonna, I want two eggs. You mean I got to have one egg? No, we're we trying to, trying to stretch. Oh, no, no. My God's bigger than that. I don't care if you have to lay some eggs in the refrigerator. He's bigger than that. Let a chicken in the backyard and I go out there and pick him up. Whatever we do, God's bigger than that. But see what I'm saying? But, but then I thought about how many people that were once in the workforce. Now they're no longer in the workforce. Their finances is not what it used to be. Now there's an adjustment. Thank you. Come on, come on. You used to buy what you want, ate what you want. Now you got to do what you know what you, you didn't just buy bacon. You wanted a certain kind of bacon. You didn't buy Kroger's sausage. You wanted Jimmy the Owens. But see, when, when things get different, it used to be you wanted, you know, uh, orange juice. You wanted simply orange or, or one of them other names. But now, ah, it's just orange juice. God, here. Yeah. I told Sister Rush coming yesterday, and I told her, I said, I'm no one really hard. I said, I said well, let's, let's just have, let's have chili dog. So I like chili dog. So she asked me to bring some cheese, and I brought some cheese and stuff. And, she, and I, asked, I said, don't you have a can of chili? And she said, yeah, she went to the store the other day. She was up at Walmart. And I saw the can, but it definitely didn't look right. And when, I, when she got the chili out, she said, well, it's, it's, she didn't want to say it. She didn't want to say it. It's great value. I said, I said what? Great value? Great, great value. Oh, no, no. I'm, go I'm going with the wolf. To the wolf. What happened to the wolf? Great value? And when she cut the can, she said, baby, it looks sort of shiny. I said, oh. I said, don't say that, don't say that no more. Don't say that no more. Don't say that no more. I said, we're going we gonna to cover it up with some cheese. Now, when I come down to my chili, I'm, I, I don't. You know, I want the wolf. I don't want our male. I want the wolf. The little boy said, uh, when was the last time you had a steaming bowl of wolf brand chili? He said, that's, that's too long. That's too long. That's too long. That's too long. You see what I'm saying? But she said, I, she said, I was on the curve expenses. Help me out, Sister Beth. I'm trying to curb expenses. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm not trying to be nothing above nobody else. But I'll eat bars, hot dog, but I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really want bars. I want ballparks. That's mine. I'm just saying. But see, when, when things get where you can't buy what you have to buy, you know what you have to do? You have to make adjustments. And whether you believe it or not, adjustments can bring a mental fatigue. Because the enemy start telling you, know what you used to do? Know what you used to have? Know, I know how you used to go get this and go get that and whatever. And that can have, well, let me tell you, even shopping. When things get so, your money ain't like it used to be, so you can't shop all the places or you don't shop as often. Some people say the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. I'm gonna shop anyway. Well, all right, all right. I ain't talking about you, but I'm talking about some of them folks that that's working, and they have to go through that. And they say, you know, you say I'm a child of the King. I know I'm saved. I'm on the Lord's side, and it makes me mighty glad. And the enemy is fighting you, 
and all that kind of stuff. Well, help, Lord. And remember, when you're in your youthfulness, when your youthfulness, when, you, when your hair was so, and you could just take yours and just, just shake it. Uh, just shake it. Uh. Go, go look in the mirror and you try to figure out which way you want to wear it. Can't get no help right now. Got quiet in there. Now, now you got to have some help. You got to have some attachments and some different other stuff and try to, you know, you know braid it, work it in, mix it up, and make it long. And then sometime you look in there in the mirror and say, the devil is a lie. Don't pull that gray hair out because he's going to come back with his cousin and bring his, 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 his granddad. And we're well, going to have a whole bunch of them up there. Yes, let it alone. Oh, you know what you got? You got a streak. <laughs> Don't start dying because you're dying. Ooh, Jesus. There's a war going on then because you got to keep it dying. And if you don't keep it dyed, it's going to get that old red look on this purple looking around the edges. Oh, God. See, all that mental stuff, you might not believe it. When you used to getting up and you could just jump up out of the chair, now you got to sort of fuck your way up. You can just go out there and get in the car, just, just get in the car and just slide in there behind the wheel. Now when you get out, you... you I don't know what I'm talking about. Used to be when you get get stopped, man, you could put it in park and whatever, get the key, open the door, and just, just come on out of there. Now, uh, praise the Lord. You sit there a minute, then you got to open the door, and put your arm, I hook it behind there, and then come up on there and catch that, almost pull that, pull that loop off the deal, try, trying to come up out of there. Then get up there. Thank you, Jesus. Used to be at the grocery store, you just walking, just pushing. Now, now you're laying on that basket. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I told y'all. The Lord told Peter, when thou was young, thou wentest where thou wouldest. When thou growest old, another's going to lead you where you wouldest not. He said, that's, this he spake concerning his but you know what he was saying? It's just like this here. See, you, just like with, like with Cookie right here. See, she got to be real careful what she do with her. Because she's watching. Pastor Murray gave a testimony years ago about this man. He, he, his dad and his daddy was staying at the house with him. And his wife started telling him he had a little grandson. And his, and his, his wife started telling him, the, the husband, Baby, we got to do something with your daddy. Because his, his English is bad, and he's getting old, and it's, it's rubbing off on Junior. He said, I just don't want to put him in a nursing home. He kept on finding. She told him, say, you know, we're going to have to do something. So he said, well, I'm going to take him to a nursing home. And so the day they got ready to take him to the nursing home, he got in the car. He had bucket seats. And Dad was over on this side, and the little boy was in the back. And he was just right. He thought that was so good. Man, I'm going. We're going to take my daddy. To the nursing home, he peeping all through the seat, talking with him and going on. So the dad decided, you know what, on the way, we're going to stop and get us a cold drink. So he, he went and got a dad a drink and got the little boy a drink. And when they got to the nursing home, the dad pulled the car and park. The boy looked up and, at his dad and told his daddy, he said, you know what, daddy, when you get old, I'm going to stop and buy you a drink when I take you to the nursing home. You know <laughs> You know what the dad did? He put the car in reverse and took the dad back home. Yeah, I'm going to stop and get you. I'm going to stop and get you a soda when I take you to the nursing home. Hey, Amen. You got to remember something. Mental damage. It's hard. In the Bible tell her, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. David was in a situation. David had just see Saul had run David out of town and David had and his men see David had some bad boys. I mean, let me tell y'all something. David had some bad boys. He had, man, he had one man with a spear. He killed a thousand Philistines with a spear. 
That's a bad boy. When he killed so many, he was ready for the